Up in the stands, Nate found it hard to keep his mouth closed after what he had just seen. But how? We only fought a couple of weeks ago. Was he holding back, or did he really just get that much stronger in the short amount of time? After Quinn won his first match, he had a feeling that something was missing, but he couldn't quite put his finger on it. Ah, wait a minute, where's my EXP? Just to make sure, Quinn quickly searched for another level 1 opponent. His opponent was found, and in this match, he wasted no time in dealing with the enemy. Blood Evolver victory! Again though, there was no system message for EXP. System, what's the meaning of this? You evolve! You're now a level 10. The experience needed was reset. In simple terms, your opponent was too weak for you, so the system didn't reward you with any EXP. Quinn cursed underneath his breath. Frustrated by the situation even more, Quinn went to quickly search for his opponent, hoping it would find him a random user of a higher level that would at least give him some experience. As he used his inspect skill on his new opponent, he was now going up against a level 4 user with an earth ability. Before the match had started, Quinn failed to notice the stands around him were getting filled. More people were starting to watch his games. Hey, so do you think this is that hacker? Oh yeah, I remember seeing a forum post about it a few days ago on their website. A user who used red energy. I thought it was fake though. Well, we will just have to wait and see. Quinn, looking at his opponent, was wondering just how strong he might be. It was the first time he was fighting against a user who wore beast equipment over his whole body, which meant he would have added stats from the equipment. 3, 2, 1, the match had finally begun. This time though, Quinn wasn't going to charge in on the get-go. He moved forward until he was within the 5 meter range of blood swipe and swung a single attack out as a tester. The earth user then stomped his foot on the ground and a solid wall of earth rose from the floor blocking the attack. A hard earth spear had risen from behind and stabbed Quinn in the back, causing him to stumble to the floor. 46 of 55 HP, damn that's what I get for staying still. But before Quinn could even fully recover, several more spears had risen from the ground coming straight for him. He rolled and dodged the first few before getting back up on his feet. This match was going to be harder than he initially thought. Wind walk, boosts activated. Using the boot skill, he was able to increase his speed and avoid all the spears coming towards him from the ground. What an annoying little fly, the earth user shouted. He then lifted both hands together to create two long walls that went past Quinn. As he brought his hands together, the walls moved with it. Now you can only go in one direction. With no other options, Quinn had no choice but to run straight ahead, but he had a plan. Skill days! Days failed, user not stunned. Oh crap! Just then the earth user created another wall in front of him, then started to punch the wall several times. The parts of the wall came flying out at incredible speed. The attacks were too fast for Quinn to react in time. The pieces of rock ended up hitting him one by one and sending him back. 42 of 55 HP, 38 of 55 HP, 34 of 55 HP. But Quinn gritted his teeth and managed to not fall over. I guess even with his strange red powers, he just can't beat a high level. Well, I guess it was all just hype in the end. But one person thought differently. Come on, Bloody Evolver, I could beat this guy in my sleep. I know you're better than this, Nate said. Screw this. Quinn had had enough. He started charging forward once again. The Earth user created another wall in front of him and had done the same attack as last time, punching the wall, causing rocks to fly out. Let's see what's stronger. Matching each rock, Quinn started to throw out a blood swipe for every rock thrown at him. Quinn's blood swipe was clearly stronger, destroying the rocks and continuing to go forward. Seeing this, the Earth user had no choice. He jumped back and had put up rows and rows of walls between the two of them, creating a barrier around three meters thick. Through your wall! Quinn then started to make the motion of the hammer strike, bringing the energy up from his toes to the top of his body. That's it! That's the strike that was used against me! Nate said excitedly. Nate was worried. Although it was clear the blood evolver was strong, it was also clear he was an amateur when it came to fighting. Take this! Blood hammer! Quinn screamed as he let out the hammer strike and just at the right moment activated his blood spray at the same time. As his fist hit the wall, it instantly started to shatter and burst into pieces all over the arena. Fragments of the wall came flying out into the stadium. The strike continued to blast through the wall. This was something the Earth user had never expected. I'll just have to take the hit then, he said, but as the attack hit him, he instantly burst into blue particles, 
ending the game. Victory, Blood Evolver. At that moment, though, Quinn had collapsed to the floor. Soon after, though, he was transported back to his own lobby space, where his strength would be returned. The whole crowd was silenced. Just who was that guy? Someone said. Hey, can one of you upload that and put it on the forum? Maybe an original has managed to get their ability in the game somehow. While the others were excited and chatting away, Nate's whole body was shaking. That attack, it wasn't the same one he used against me. He knew that if he had taken that attack head on, like he did the hammer strike last time, half of his health wouldn't have gone down. So, you really did get stronger. Well, I will just have to get stronger then. Back inside the lobby, all of his stat points had been returned. So Quinn was no longer on the floor gasping for air like he had just sprinted a whole marathon. The blood hammer strike skill took up a lot more stamina than I thought. The smile was suddenly on Quinn's face. User defeated, 25 EXP gained, 40 of 100 EXP points. Finally, after defeating a level 4 ability user, the system had rewarded him for his hard work. He exited from the pod and to his surprise, what looked like a little boy was standing in front of him. Hey, Blood Evolver, Logan said. Looks like we finally meet. The boy standing in front of Quinn was quite short. His height only reached to about Quinn's chest. So how did you do it, huh? Logan asked. He immediately walked past and shoved Quinn to the side and started inspecting the pod he was just using. He placed his hand on top of the machine and closed his eyes. Doesn't look like any modifications have been made to the pod. Then how? Logan mumbled. Then when looking at Quinn, he spotted that his watch had the number one displayed. What? That's impossible, though. You use such powerful skills in the game. You should at least be a level five. I could have sworn you were an original. In return, Quinn looked at his watch and saw the number eight on it. Just looking at the number struck fear into his heart, and he froze. Should I make a run for it? You're not thinking of running, are you? Because I haven't finished questioning you. I need to know how. How did you manage to break my game? Logan shouted as he started to go off into a rant. I can understand if you hacked into the system, but this, this, this I just don't understand. Logan started getting closer to Quinn as he rambled like a madman. Why do I seem to attract the strangest people, Quinn thought. If you don't want to answer me here, then you can go with me to my dorm room. There's plenty of time and nobody will be able to see us. As Logan touched Quinn's hand to pull him over, something strange had happened. Ability detected. Alterations to the system are trying to be made. Alterations have been blocked. But the strangest thing was, Quinn wasn't the only one who was seeing these messages. Logan was too. He animatedly let go and touched his hand as if he had been scratched by something. You! Are you a... This was it. Before Quinn could do anything, his cover had been blown. Would he have to fight to the death to keep his identity a secret? Or would he use his Shadow Cloak skill to hide and run away? Maybe he could run to one of the portals and live his life on another planet. Are you a robot? Logan shouted. Huh? Quinn replied, confused. You! You have a system! My ability confirmed it! You must be a robot with a powerful master, an ability that goes above mine. Did Richard Eno create you? That would also explain the game. A robot can't have any MC points, and those attacks must be programmed into your artificial brain. Looking at little Logan now, he just seemed like an excited little kid. Was it better off telling him the truth, or coming up with some other type of lie? Quinn thought hard. He took a deep breath. I'm not a robot, but for some reason one day I woke up and had this system ability. Maybe it was a gift from a god, who knows? The skills you saw are some of the things I can do, Quinn replied. Is it an ability similar to mine then? I wonder who did this to you. Maybe they turned you into an android. Android technology has come a long way, but the use of AI systems inserted into their brain was banned. Quinn looked at Logan, who now wouldn't stop staring at him. Then a thought came to his mind. He had been looking for someone who would be able to help him out with the watch. It was clear that Logan knew a lot about machinery, and something like changing the number displayed on the watch would be easy for him. Can you keep this a secret? Quinn replied. Maybe the two of us can work together, perhaps find who did this to me. There are a few things I need help with. Logan was genuinely fascinated by this ability. He had never seen anything like it before, and the curiosity was already driving him mad. Of course, it would also give me the chance to study with you. Logan then put out his hand. The name is Logan. Quinn, he replied as the two shook hands. Ability detected. Alterations to the system are trying to be made. Alterations have been blocked. 
Logan then pulled his hand away again, almost immediately. That does not feel good. Maybe we should avoid touching each other for now? <laughs> Agreed. Quinn laughed nervously. Just outside the school at the front gates, the unexpected had just occurred. Layla was struggling to stand as she had just heard certain words come out of Vorden's mouth. First, I'm going to have to ask you to step back a bit, Layla said, and no touchy-touchy from you. Look, I'm trying to be reasonable here, Vorden said. Come on, Quinn said that you could help me. Every time she looked at Vorden, she remembered when she was being choked by him. It wasn't a good feeling, and her senses were still tingling all over the place every time he approached. If it wasn't for the fact that Aaron was standing by her side, she would have run the second she saw him coming over. The two of them soon would also be going to the portal expedition together. It was important they tried their best to make up while they could. She let out a big breath and gave in. <sighs> Fine, what is it? Actually, it's related to Peter. Quinn said that you two had spoken to him while we were away on the other planet. Did you manage to get anything out of him? No, I could tell that we wouldn't. It seemed like he was scared of something, even with Aaron there threatening him, which meant whatever he was scared of was a bigger problem than Aaron, Layla said. Well, I don't think we can get anything out of Peter right now. I was hoping by outcasting him like this, he would go back to the person who put him up to this. Wait, what? Layla said. You mean you're doing this whole thing on purpose? I understand he needs to be punished, but don't you think you're going a little too far? Too far? Vorden replied. You don't even know what really happened there. Were you nearly killed by a blood-sucking beast, abandoned in a world full of monsters everywhere? Blood-sucking beasts? So did Quinn really? Just then, Layla stopped herself as she turned to look at Aaron by her side. Anyway, if you can't get anything out of Peter, then try a first-year student named Earl. He was the one hanging around Peter before this whole thing started. Earl, got it, thanks for the help, Vorden said. Oh, before I go, Aaron, do you mind if I touch your hand? Aaron stood up from the ground and looked at Vorden for a few seconds. I hope you use it well, Aaron said as she held out her hand. With her ability copied, Vorden then turned away and walked off. He's a tough one, Aaron shouted. Even with my threats, he didn't reveal anything. Don't worry, Vorden said, smiling back. I know someone who taught me a few things. Vorden continued to walk off back into school. Hey, Raiden, looks like I might have a job for you soon. Hi, Quinn here. Wondering what happens next? If you want to jump the queue and unleash all episodes, click on the link here and install the Pocket FM app.